I know you, you kind of were wavering in high school, not really sure, but you, did you have any indication of what you wanted to be? No. In fact, I, I did not really see myself as growing up. In fact, I may still be trying to decide what I want to be if I ever grow up. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, it's interesting. I went to college without knowing what I wanted to do. Why Oklahoma A&M? Uh, because I got a scholarship. Uh, it was offered through um, the uh, extension service to go there for my first year. I got a small stipend scholarship. Uh, I worked all the way through college. Um, Where'd you work? Oh, I worked in, I ran the elevator in the dorm. I worked in the kitchen. I eventually worked in the Dean of Graduate School's office. Whatever I had that was available that fit my schedule that I could do. Um, I took a general arts and science course, which was wonderful that I did that. I could not have planned my education any better if I had intentionally set out to get the education I had. I had two years of a general arts and science and I decided I had to major in something. So I majored in accounting and economics. And I graduated in four years with 10 hours of graduate credit in accounting. I think it was 10 hours in accounting and economics. Um, I decided that I wanted to go to South America, to Venezuela, as an accountant with an oil company. And interviewed for that. While that was being decided, I went home to Wewoka and straightened up books for a friend of ours that had a business whose uh, bookkeeper had royally messed up his books and then I hired and trained him a bookkeeper. While I was doing that, a friend of mine who was head of DHS, Department of Human Services, uh, uh, for that county asked me to take the exam to be a caseworker and work there. While that was going on, I got word from the oil company that they did not send women, single women, to Venezuela, which really ticked me off. <laughs> so I took the exam to be a caseworker on my lunch hour, went to work for Seminole County uh, Department of Welfare, um, and had a caseload of 450 old age, aid to the disabled, and aid to dependent children, and started providing those services in mostly Seminole and the rural area around Seminole. Um, my supervisor was a woman called Nidra Hankins who was wonderful and she immediately said you're going to social work school on a department scholarship and I said okay uh, but the experiences that I had uh, like my first real social work was a man who was an old age assistant who lived on the edge of Seminole. So I drove by his house almost every time I went to Seminole to do my cases. And um, I stopped to do his annual visit and I read his record before I went, the year before. And in it was the fact that he had a sore pretty bad sore on his hand. When I visited with him 
and saw he had a bandage on his hand. I said, is that the same sore you had a year ago? And he said, yes. And thus began my harassing him uh, for medical care. <laughs> um, he finally told me that he had gone to University Hospital and they wanted to cut his hand off because it was cancer and that he wasn't about to let them cut his hand off. And I stopped to see him every time and I finally got him to agree that I, if I could get him seen in medical clinic rather than surgical clinic, that he would go back to University Hospital. So we made all those arrangements. He went to medical clinic. They did not cut his hand off. They did radiation and saved his hand. Uh, and that felt good. Uh, I also, I was 20, Two, 23 years old. Um, I also had some interesting experiences along the way uh, and some funny experiences along the way. But I kept that caseload and I developed relationships with my clientele and did my first year of graduate work at OU. I had applied for and been admitted to Tulane and the Department of Welfare sent their personnel man down to tell me if I got a scholarship, I had to go to OU because they needed students. And that really ticked me off because I wanted to go to Tulane. But anyway, I went to OU and uh, they asked me why I was so late interviewing to come to uh, to be admitted there, and I told them why, and that I was a reluctant student. Uh, the person interviewing me also did not cotton to the fact that I wore spring elaters. What's that? You don't know what spring elaters no. are. It's a shoe with a heel that is totally backless and has a thing across the front and a strap in the middle that causes it to cling to your foot. Okay. They're not social work professional looking. Uh, so we discussed my spring elaters when I was being interviewed. One of the funny experiences I had before I went to social work school, however, was a man, and I did things uh, that I thought was right um, to stand up for my clients that were my responsibility. I did the first appeal of a decision of the department from Seminole County to get this person certified for aid to the disabled. Um, also I had a client that <clears throat> had had his feet frozen and uh, that was why he was applying for aid to the disabled. And he had to go to Oklahoma City to the work evaluation clinic. And I had trouble tracking him down. Uh, I would get him appointments and he wouldn't keep them. Um, finally, we were officed in the Seminole County Courthouse. One of the jailers told me that they had this man in jail. One of the sheriff's deputies told me they had this man in jail. I said, keep him there <laughs> until I can get him an appointment and you can take him to Oklahoma City to the work evaluation clinic, which they did. And when he came back, he was uh, next, uh, you know, your clients get to where they know your car. And the minute you drive into the neighborhood, they're there. And uh, I drove into the neighborhood after he came back, and he waved his arms and ran out in front of the car and stopped me, and he said, Miss Wood, Miss Wood. He said, I'm disabled. I went to that work evaluation clinic, and they told me that I was disabled, that I was the most disabled man they had ever seen in their life. He said, do you know what? One of my nuts is smaller than the <laughs> other one. <laughs> So 
So that was my novel introduction into the profession. <laughs> what, what year did you start working with Seminole County? In Seminole County, uh, I graduated from college in 54. Okay. And I went back to Seminole County and worked uh, for that summer. And then I went to DHS in 55. And then I went to OU in 55, 56, and graduated. And I dropped out a year so, and worked on my thesis and um, worked off what I owed the department, which was another interesting experience. I was one of the youngest supervisors for the Department of Human Services in Tulsa County. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I went back and graduated. Uh, I went back on a work study program with uh, uh, Griffin Memorial Hospital in uh, Norman. And I worked weekends covering the hospital for the social work department and went to school. And then I had my field placement also at the Griffin. Well, what I'd like you to do uh, it's kind of take me, you started your early career, try to just take me through your career. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> just to highlight, I um, graduated, uh, I worked at Griffin Memorial, I was hired for the social work department there. Um, worked there. I did uh, a men's admission ward, a men's acute and intensive treatment ward, and a men's chronic patient ward. I was a social worker for three wards at Griffin. Um, in that time, I met my husband there, and we got married, and uh, he was living and working in Tulsa for vocational rehabilitation when we did get married and uh, I moved to Tulsa. So I uh, started working for um, the uh, Child Welfare Department of DHS as a district, well I was hired as a social worker for the Child Protective Unit in Tulsa County. and. Um, the person who was in charge of that unit died very soon after I got there, so I took over the Child Protective Unit in Tulsa County and ran that for a period of time, handling all the cases of abuse and neglect of children in Tulsa County. Uh, then my husband was transferred, uh, he was vocational rehabilitation. Uh, was transferred to uh, Eastern State Hospital in Venita, and they called and wanted me to come to work for them. So I moved with him to Eastern State and headed up what was called the Hospital Improvement Project and supervised staff there. Um, then uh, in 60. Sixty-five, we moved back to Tulsa. And I was in charge of the aftercare program for the Department of Mental Health in Tulsa County. Um, while I was doing that job, I, because I had had a board of directors, or a board, advisory board when I was with Child Welfare Protective Unit, several of the people in Tulsa County were on the board of Planned Parenthood. And I was asked to apply for the job of executive director of Planned Parenthood when that was coming open, um, which I did. And I was director of Planned Parenthood in Tulsa for 18 years. 